and it appealed to me. Very big, graphic, beautifully printed, um, and a real eclectic, you know, different different styles all over the place. So I showed you Gary Panter's slash covers. So he was, it was, it was almost like, oh, they, you know, they know that Gary Panter's good. So that's good. There was, there was uh, Kaz who was uh, being published in uh, a New York rocker. So it's like he, he had his comics in, uh, you know, in a magazine here. And so getting all those people gathered was, was, was nice. It was a good sign. Yeah. Uh, there have been a lot of book reviews that said, uh your, your world for this comic has been William Burroughs inspired. Uh, inspired. Can you expand more on that? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I mentioned it earlier. Um, he was someone I read um, during that time period. There's something very, uh, there's something very repulsive about his about his world, but very intense and very visual. Uh, he writes. You know, he's not always the best writer, but when he writes well, he's. he's I, I really enjoyed his humor and his. And his you know, just just the way he writes. Um, one one thing that he did um, later, after he published Naked Lunch, was he started he, he was adapting or taking on some of these uh, so, some ideas from the from the art world, um, taking a collage techniques of, of cutting up cutting up text and literally collaging it with other texts and having random random connections. In the writing, um, and so in, in this story, I have I have things that, that allude to that kind of cut up technique, um, but there's nothing random the way that I with the way that I put it together. There's a, there's kind of there's juxta, juxtaposition of different images put together, text gets broken up a little bit. Uh, the character, as I showed you in the slides, there's a point where he's doing his version of William Burroughs cut up writing. Um, which just seems like a real art student sort of thing to do. Um, and yes, I did get up on stage with a cassette stick oh. on my neck at some point. No. <laughs> a couple times, I think. Luckily, there's no, there's no, uh, no recorded, uh, <laughs> nothing recorded. One more question, maybe? Um, so you have these images like the mushroom and I no, I mean, I, I don't think I, I wouldn't if I really thought I was stealing. I think, I think what I was trying to point out here is that there were, there were just images that were so embedded. I mean, if you're talking about a, if I draw you a red shape, you know, my is that something you steal? If, if you make it blue, is it stealing less? So for me, it's really, it's, it, I do need that kind of direct reference. Um, there's, again, we're talking about art students. We're talking directly about like a specific artist. So um, I showed you the, you know, the Louise Bourgeois. You never make the connection. I, yeah, I guess you make the connection. That's a very goofy looking. She's a great artist. And this looks very kind of silly, but um, and it's meant to be. Um, but I mean, there's yeah, there's a discussion in in the next story about Louise Bourgeois. There's like their art students talking about this stuff, and, and you need to be able to show the actual, you know, what the reference is. So yeah, in my case, I think that. That's necessary. And, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really see. I, it, I, I think it's stealing if you're trying to pass it off as something that's that's yours. And it's you know, I, there, there's references. It's almost like saying I don't know. Anyway, make, make, you know, ignoring that Walt Disney existed, or they're just kind of cultural references that that, that you know, I, I think it's perfectly good to refer to. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you to Charles Burns. He's going to stick around, answer any other questions you might have, and sign books. So come on up. Upcoming events are at strandbooks.com. Thank you guys.